The Lord be with you and also with you. Good evening everyone and welcome to our service of evening prayer on this the second Sunday of Trinity. We are using the form of evening prayer too in our prayer books on page 101 or 37 in a large print edition. We've also, as always, uploaded the service sheet onto our Facebook page a little earlier today for you to download should you wish to do so. Our hymn this evening is Before the Throne of God Above, which has been recorded by the Parish Praise Band. On Tuesday evening, our Bible study is at 8 o'clock, and on Wednesday evening, the prayer meeting is also at 8 o'clock. And for both of these meetings, we use Zoom, and you'd be welcome to join us for that. If you'd like to join us, then send us an email to Killyman at gmail.com and we'll forward you the link to enable you to join in in those meetings. Let me encourage you as always to join in in the singing of our hymn and in the responses to our service. And we sing together the first verse of Before the Throne of God Above. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. And so let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 100. You'll find it on page 706 of the prayer books, or on the order of service. And we say the psalm in alternate half verse, Psalm 100. O be joyful in the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
We'll now have our scripture reading. The reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Uria and I plead with Cynthia to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard, from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join with me in proclaiming our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. The Collect of today, the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. We say together the third collect at evening prayer. Grant, O Lord, 
that the word which we hear this day may so take root in our hearts that we, living in accordance with your holy will, may ever praise and magnify your glorious name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have our intercessions and then we will sing together the second verse of our hymn before the throne of God above. Let us pray to God who always promises to hear our prayers. Lord of the harvest, send labourers to our church to proclaim your kingdom. Stir up vocations to the ordained and lay ministers of your church. Bless John our Archbishop and pour out your spirit upon our parish. We ask for your wisdom and grace to fall on Reverend Mark as he continues to lead us in these strange days. Strengthen the whole community of faith to live and announce your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the world, inspire men and women into political service. Transform the unjust structures of society that all may have cause for rejoicing. We pray for all our political leaders in Westminster, Stormont and local government. Help them in the decisions they make which affect our daily lives. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen, and we thank you for her faith and commitment to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hospitality, as Abram welcomed strangers and received your blessing, help us to realise the needs of the community around us. Give us the ability to bless others in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of healing, we pray for those who are ill, at home or in hospital for those who are ill as a result of COVID-19. We ask that you lay your healing hand upon them. We also pray for those who are bereaved and ask, that, ask for you to comfort them in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, we bring our own prayers to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us bless one another with the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we pray that you would come in the abundant power of your Holy Spirit, that you would open our eyes that we may see Jesus, open our ears that we would hear Jesus, and open our hearts that we would receive Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we're continuing our theme on the book of Philippians, on Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. This morning we looked at a, one particular verse in our Children's Day service in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, I say it again, rejoice. And I was trying to explain to the boys and girls and to everybody that was watching that service the difference between an earthly rejoicing but what it means to rejoice in the Lord. You know, there are times when we rejoice, there are times when we're happy. Perhaps in the more human side of things, maybe at a, at a marriage or at the birth of a child or uh, even as I said this morning when, when our favourite sports team happens to win a game or, or some of those sorts of things 
might make us rejoice. In other words, be happy. But the Apostle Paul says that there's a rejoicing which is actually deeper than that which we're familiar with. He uses the terminology, rejoice in the Lord always. And so this isn't just for a temporary time. So, for example, when the sports team wins, that rejoicing lasts only for a little time, but then we move on or forget about the win or there's something else that draws our attention. But when we rejoice in the Lord, it should be a rejoicing that is in us from now until he calls us and then beyond, but also should be every moment of every day. Every moment we're awake, but also every moment when we're asleep. And that rejoicing only comes whenever we have that relationship in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always, Paul says. So it can be very difficult to rejoice in the Lord when things aren't going the way that we want them to do. Like for many people over this last number of months, it has been difficult to rejoice all the time. Rejoice always because of restrictions that COVID-19 has placed upon us or because even of how it has affected you and me individually in a personal way. But we need to rejoice in the Lord always. And that comes through having an inner peace that the Apostle Paul goes on to talk about. In verse 7, he says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So Paul not only tells us to rejoice in the Lord, he tells us that there is a peace in the Lord that is a peace which guards us. It protects us. It protects our hearts and our minds. The heart is where we asked in simple childhood faith the Lord Jesus to live and the mind which controls our body. And we need to, as the Apostle Paul writes in another one of his letters, renew our minds. In other words, think in the way that Jesus would want us to think. That's why I often pray at the start of sermons, Lord, open our eyes that we would see Jesus. Open our hearts to receive Jesus. Or we sometimes also pray, Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. We want Jesus to control our whole being and to be in the centre of all that we do. Rejoice in the Lord always. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds. But this is only possible by being in a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. By living daily and dying daily for him. And what do we mean by that? How can we live daily but also die daily? Well, let's look at that just for a moment. To live daily means that we have to die to ourselves. To live daily means that we have to do everything that Jesus wants us to do. That we live our lives for him. But in order to do that, we have to die to ourselves. In other words, put away the own selfishness that's within us our own selfish behaviour, our own human desires to want to do things my way. But actually learn to live for Christ, to die to self. And when we do this, then the peace of God guards our hearts and our minds. The Apostle Paul tells us to obtain this sense of rejoicing and also this sense of Peace is through prayer. He says, verse 5, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So in other words, in everything, we need to be praying. Not just at mealtimes, not just at night when we go to bed, 
Not just first thing in the morning whenever we waken. Not just whenever we feel that we need to send up, as we call them, an arrow prayer. But we actually need to be praying to the Lord in everything. So yes, before we get out of bed in the morning, before we eat our meals, the last thing we do at night, but also continually throughout the day, committing every task to the Lord. Praying in every situation. But Paul says, not just giving God our shopping lists, he says, with thanksgiving. In other words, thanking God for what he has already given us and also thanking him for what is to come, for what is ahead. I thank you, Lord, for bringing me safely through the night. I thank you for the day that is ahead of us and I commit that day into your keeping. Perhaps you could pray first thing in the morning. And when we soak ourselves and every action, every situation, as Paul describes it, in prayer and petition, then the peace of God begins to flow through us. And that peace allows us to rejoice in the Lord always. Because we experience for ourselves what it means to be in a full relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 8 on, verse 8 and 9, Paul then goes on to give a challenge. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Now, is Paul being big-headed here? Is Paul saying, look at the way I do it and you must do it too? That's not what Paul is saying. But Paul is saying, look at what Jesus is doing in me and try to let Jesus do the same in you. And he says, as a result of all that, again, this word peace, the peace of God will be with you. In other words, no matter where you go, no matter what situation you find yourself in, God will go with you into it. In fact, God is already ahead of you in it. God promises to always, always, always be with us, to never leave us nor forsake us. When we are up on the top of a mountain, God is there with us. When we're low down in a valley, God is there with us. When we're enjoying the sunshine of life, God is with us. But when we're going through a storm, God is with us. God is always, always there for us. The Lord Jesus Christ longs to give us that peace which comes only from him. That peace which comes from knowing that no matter what happens in this world, that we leave this world and are present with him in his kingdom. As a result of that peace, then we need not be anxious about what happens next. We need not be anxious about when our time comes to leave this world. So Paul in this passage is telling us to rejoice and to have peace because of the relationship that we have with Jesus and the benefits that come from that. But he's also telling us to live a life that's attractive to other people. To live a life that's going to call other people into a relationship with him. So that when other people see how we live, me as an individual, you as an individual, we as a church, as individuals and as a body, they will want to be a part of it. And so enter into a relationship with Jesus as well. Seeking him in all that they do as well as us. So let me encourage you this evening as I come to a close, these few simple little verses, 
Let me encourage you to rejoice in the Lord always. No matter what you're going through in life, rejoice in the Lord. Turn the frown into a smile. But let me also encourage you to experience wholeheartedly that peace of God which transcends all understanding. In other words, that we can't describe. Words fail us when we describe the peace of God. That is only possible by having a relationship with him. And so let me ask you one further question tonight, as we've asked so many times in the past. Are you in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know him as your own personal saviour? Do you experience that peace that transcends all understanding? Because you know that when your time comes to leave this world, that you will be with him in his kingdom forever. Let me encourage you, if you know and love Jesus, to live the life that he calls you to live. And if you don't yet know him, to experience him in your life and invite him to be your saviour. May God's name be praised. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your message to us and for the teaching of the Apostle Paul. We thank you for this chapter and for these few verses. Lord, help us to continually rejoice in what you're doing in our lives and help us to always experience, but not only experience, to recognise that peace that comes from you. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm delighted that you've done so. And so we sing together the last verse of our hymn before the throne of God above. And stay safe, keep praying, keep praying and stay safe.